At least one of us is happy. Sam! There you go. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Come here! You get pets. You get a ruffle. You get a ruffle. Everyone go away. Nope, wrong side of the door, dog. Wrong side. There we go. Yep. <laughs> What's up today guys? Uh, awesome, awesome timing. So found out 4x4 four four doesn't work and it's snowing. So we're going to fix that. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple ways uh, for the CAD center axle disconnect. I'm going to show you a few ways on how you can fix bypass or upgrade from that. And I'll show you how you narrow down where your problem is, whether it's uh, your transfer case, your linkage, or the axle itself. So uh, they use a vacuum system. Once you put in a 4x4, you manually shift that lever. There is a vacuum disconnect on the front axle for 90 pre-91. So obviously, a swap would be to upgrade to a newer Dana 30. Front axle high pinion is the one you want. Uh, just make sure you get the right gears. Very important. Reason to upgrade, you get larger diameter axle shafts as well as large u-joints and you get rid of this bullshit vacuum hose line thing that just breaks in minus 35 like yesterday show you guys how you narrow down what's going on and pinpoint your issue and I guess we're tearing apart the front end again actually no first time on this first time we're tearing the front end apart on the day on the jeep jeep check comanche all right let's get started let's get started from the inside Step one would be to make sure your linkage is working. As you can see, mine, that's a, that's a hard pass. We'll give it a pass. So, to determine if 4x4 is working, pretty obvious. You should feel it. Uh, once you have that determined, turn off your vehicle. And you have it in two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive. When you hop outside, you should be able to spin your front drive shaft by hand. When you put in 4 high, 4 low, whatever, just on a 4 high crawl outside that front drive shaft should not spin if it is spinning then your issue is more than likely your linkage and or your transfer case if it is not spinning good news that means it's downstream of your drive shaft you either have a blown diff which you should hear snapped axle which you might not hear and or that center axle disconnect is not functioning there is a vacuum diaphragm there with three lines going to it and one of a million things could happen and go wrong so it could be a minor crack it could not seal dry rotted rubber anything like that will cripple your 4x4 so now two wheel drive it'll spin i'll show you in four by now Show you what my issue is and i'm gonna not slam my truck with my door oh, fuck that was close all right getting friendly already so front drive shaft is not spinning and it is in four by four so that means all your transfer case linkage up here somewhere your transfer case is functioning and your drive shaft is doing its job so now we can go down pretty obvious it's gonna be where's my finger that so this is your center axle disconnect you have the three vacuum lines there and you have this housing we have a few different options on how to take care of this there are kits you can buy online like i mentioned there is the rusty's one i think it's abk-15 or something and all that is a block off plate and a seal you don't need many other parts i think there's about a fitting possibly a tap you need to do but uh i'm gonna do that one at the end so i will leave a time stamp or jumper or something a time a time of the video where I explain the diaphragm disassembly. What I am doing is I was gonna do a full swap. I have another Dana 30 high pinion that is newer. I was gonna do that option. It's in the ship pile. I'm gonna re-gear when I do that and diff cover and build. So for now, 
just to get me through the next month or two. Uh, I'm gonna take the axles out of that one that is a 92 and up I believe in a 30. To do this you really only need the long one for the passenger side as this is a one piece and the one that's in their factory has a little seam right here for a disconnect. So I have both out already, so I'm just gonna toss them both in. Doing this does require you to pull out the entire carrier of the diff, pull the axles off, wheels off, brakes, everything off. So uh, we're gonna get through there. Special tools you'll need, I think is a 36 mil for the axle nuts and probably a big ass breaker bar. I have an electric impact, so I guess let's get to her, start ripping her up. Right on, so been busy. Let's throw the brakes apart, did the driver's side and got her out. Everything's going pretty okay. Hubs totally rusted in, so fun. It's so one axle out. Had to take the tie rod off. It's a 19 mil with the cotter pin. Uh, these are 36 mils. The axle nuts and cotter pins everywhere. So driver's side done. Hop onto the passenger and then uh, drain the diff. So fun times. <laughs> So here we are inside of this fine diff. So, this would be the ideal time to swap your uh, diff cover, put in a locker, anything like that. Uh, the next step is these caps have to go on the same way they came off. So what I'm gonna do is just stamp the top. Uh, I always put it at the top, line it up with the housing, and one on the main, and mark them differently, pull them off, make sure they go on in the same orientation. Other than that, not bad. Teeth don't look terrible. A little bit of water was in there, you can see some froth, but uh, it's about 130,000 kilometers, so that's not terrible. Rip those off. I need to pull the rest of this axle out. Better back here. Rip the caps off, pull the stub shaft out, pull the carrier out, put a seal in, cover on, axles, delete. Yes. All right, so those bolts up there for the carrier main caps there we go are i believe 5 8 or 16. let me come over to this cute little thing i am stuck there we go hard to see but uh there's going to be the four bolts on it it's going to be this giant block and diaphragm off the side here those are 11 or possibly 7 16 so once we get those off we should pull it off and there will be a shift fork cracker open probably gonna piss oil that was easy okay pissed oil out well that was super all right Oh, yeah, let's not drop that on brakes. All right, so uh, oil will come out, and the reason is this entire tube on the passenger side is wet. So it's full of oil. That is where the seal is, and we are going to leave that seal, and we're installing one on this side, and that's why the carrier has to come out. So after this, if you were to slide the full axle in, it would not actually seal, and you'd get oil coming out on the ground, sort of like that. So full carrier hammer a seal in there without an installer, put the carrier back in, done. So, what you have to do, so I rotated it over, and I used pry bar, and there's a little C-clip on this axle right here. Uh, there we go. Okay. C-clip like this, and you pry that off, make sure you catch it, don't throw it. Once that's done, that's your axle, and you can just push that away. Slide it down your tube, now you can use a magnet and pull it out, and then we pull the carrier out. So this is the seal we're working with here. So we have to install it this way, inside of the housing here. So I gotta try and find something. Tap this in and then we can put the carrier in, so time to get creative. It's now getting late. This is where we're at now. So far, none of the seals have been right. This one apparently has the right dimensions. So we're just gonna not get our hopes up. So, see what this does, and again, I'll let you know. Here we are. This is my little setup. Hidden here with a hammer. That's my new seal in. 
I don't even know what the part number is anymore. I'm gonna have to look again. So, about an hour to tear the front end apart and about five hours to find a seal that works. Make sure that your bearing races are staying with their side. Make sure you leave everything out outside so it uh, probably gets snowed on. This is a, that's a two part episode, I guess. So yeah, good, good night right there so far. Right on, so beautiful day today. It was supposed to snow last night, instead it rained. So that's gonna be fun. So I guess we're starting bright and early. All right, so these are what we're working with. So those are the factory ones out of my 89 Comanche, and the two in the front here, the nice rusty ones. Those are from a 92 and up, I believe, Dana 30. So really curious where it went, but there's another half of this one, and that's what makes up your long axle here for the passenger side. So the little diaphragm quick disconnect will shuttle a fork across, which would link that with its other half over here. We're going to bypass that entire vacuum system, use a solid axle the way it should be, well, 4x4. Yeah, I will show you guys how to make those ones work. Um, it's it's raining, so I have to focus on getting this done, because right now it's minus 4. It's getting worse, so we're going to get mine on the road, then I can make a video about all that. So, <clears throat> Ooh. so um, yeah, I guess i got to find some motivation right now, but... Uh, we just gonna start slamming stuff together, put on the time lapse or video, and just fucking do this before it gets colder. <laughs> This camera doesn't want to stay clean, so got our hub back in. Uh, everything's snugged up, not torqued yet. I believe you need new axle nuts, could be wrong, but that's usually the case, so I guess we'll hop to the other side and throw that together too. For the passenger side axle right there, uh, you had to remove a C-clip. Do not have to install a C-clip, it is not long enough. Uh, that's only to hold this intermediate shaft, so for this setup you do not need to uh, install that C-clip again. Time to put a diff cover on. <laughs> So with this housing, I just had to grind the edge of it here until I could thin it out and get a screwdriver in. Then you can pry this apart. On the end of this rod, there is a rivet kind of deal, a button that holds this all together. So you just grind the tip off, separate the rod, and then this is all you need left. Uh, there are three sort of E-clips. Uh, you just need the two smaller ones, and they only go in one place, so can't screw that up. I do not have a plug. It's a 3 8 NPT plug that you would thread into this. And all you have to do, slide your rod all the way in. I'll put a picture up of this plug, and you have to cut this flush, so when you tighten the plug in, this rod is held in nice and tight. It'll make sense when I put the picture up. This will fit snugly inside. You may have to drill it out a bit. More or less what you need to do. Once you're there, look at your shift fork and make sure it's in good shape. Uh, they usually crack right here, as well as the bottom. Make sure everything's nice and happy. Make sure you put it in the right way. Throw in the E-clips. 
tighten that down you're gonna have to tap this to a 3 8 NPT thread as well sorry Teflon tape tighten it all in throw this fork in the correct way pop your two E clips in and when you uh, put this back on the housing this will sit on the coupler keep it nice and uh, positioned here could be a snug fit pop it in swap out the cork gasket if you need tighten her down good to go effectively that'll be the same as a solid axle nice and easy just need two two other parts put them in a the description that's all you need to do so it's been a nightmare it's been a rough couple days but the seals are the hardest part of this whole job i'll put down the three options that i know of in the description part numbers and all and good luck thank you guys for watching